<clears throat> okay, so last week we beginning we have begun the chapter for redox reactions uh, by review the oxidation numbers or oxygen states. And also we proceed to uh, learn or review about the balance redox equations use half reaction. Uh, the half reaction balancing follow the, uh, uh, the protocol as first balance the elements, the elements that is other than hydrogen or oxygen, and then followed by balance oxygen, um, adding water molecules to balance oxygen, if the oxygen is not balanced. And then balance hydrogen by adding protons, the H plus, hydrogen cation. And after this, uh, we balance the charge by adding electrons. Adding electrons to whichever side has um, more positive charge. The charge is more positive. Okay, we add electrons. And after that, uh, between the two balanced half reactions, we want to make sure the electron transfer uh, equals. The electrons moving out of uh, the oxidation half reactions should equal the electrons needed as a reactant in the reduction half reaction. And so to do this, uh, we, turn, uh, we turn both the number of electrons to the least common multiple. So for example, if one half reaction um, have four electrons as a reactant, and the other half reaction have six electrons as a product. The least common multiple between four and six will be 12. So we add, uh, we turn the electrons to the, um, both electrons turn to 12 by multiplying a smallest integer. So the four times three, four electrons times three, six electrons times two. And after this, we can combine two half reactions together. Uh, the reactant combined with the reactant, product combined with product, and uh, the electrons should cancel. And after cancel electrons, we finally simplify by re removing the redundant, by removing redundant protons or water molecules uh, from both sides of the equation. So that's the balanced reaction in the acidic solutions um, in a nutshell, it's a quick, quick verbal review. There are many redox reactions uh, happens in the basic solutions. In the basic solutions is high pH and proton concentration very low, below 10 to the negative seven molar. Yeah. Uh, when you have a, this condition, the Balanced redox reaction should not have proton as a reactant or product because their concentration too low. Uh, instead, the hydroxide concentration, which should become larger than the 10 to negative seven, is big, it's a big concentration. And so this kind of equation, we should rewrite the equation. If not rebalance, simply just rewrite the equation in the basic solutions. And to do that, we, uh, based on how many protons in this redox reaction. We add equal number, the same number of hydroxides. We add hydroxides. We draw the hydroxide ion to both sides of the equation. And this will react with proton, becomes water. And <clears throat> And after, the, um, after this, we simplify or clean up the final equation to remove extra water molecules. Um, so that's the basic principle. And so we have a, an example for this. This is the uh, redox equation with balance in the acidic solutions. And you can see the final balance redox, re, redox equation have 
four protons on the right hand side. Uh, to rewrite this equation in the alkyne or basic conditions, we simply add enough hydroxide ions on both sides of the equation. And so that convert all the protons to water. So basically for, with this equation, I would add four, add a four hydroxide on both sides of the equation. So four hydroxide, because there are four proton ions. You need a four hydroxide to neutralize. I should use a quote, quote, neutralize. Uh, it's not a really have a, a base as added reactant to neutralize the reaction. Uh, but in the equation, we can treat like that. We add four hydroxide. After adding four hydroxide, it will react with the four proton, become four water molecules. And so after this, the new equation, it'll becomes whatever reactant, no change. Except we add a four hydroxide. So the four hydroxide becomes part of the reactant. And on the product side, we have these two with unaffected. So that is still And here, four proton and four hydroxide, these react, give you four water molecules. Because uh, the neutralization reaction, it is a proton, react with hydroxide, becomes water. So this would be the same redox equation balanced in the alkaline conditions. And finally, you notice there's a two water molecule here and a four water molecule here. So subtract two water molecules from both sides of the equation. So you don't have the water left. And here you lose two water, have only two water molecules left. So this is a finally completed balance, the redox reaction in alkaline or basic solutions. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And so that's the uh, balanced redox reaction. Today we do the final wrap up. Uh, at a cup. So far we covered both the acidic and the basic conditions, how to balance redox equations. Okay, so the next topic, we'll get into the redox reactions. and get into the electrochemistry. From this point on, we'll be focused on electrochemistry. So first, let's take a look that we have a video. Is a copper ion reaction with zinc metal. This, this will take a little while because uh, we're switching between this. Uh, the, this is a reaction, um, it shows you, explain how does the reaction take place. The actual process, switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So the reaction happens, um, we have a zinc strip, it is side, silver shiny metal strip put into a uh, beaker containing copper two ions. Copper two ions has very unique blue color. It is because the copper two ion uh, form a complex with the water molecules give you blue color. 
absorb the yellow light and give you blue color. So when the pure zinc metal strip put into the copper solution, uh, there are reduction reaction, redox reaction taking place. Very quickly, this zinc strip surface will be covered with a black, uh, very rough, uh, some kind of a debris on top of the blue, the uh, zinc strip. And at the same time, over time, the zinc strip being corroded, uh, very obvious corrosion. You see the pits uh, being, looks like being chewed away by some, uh, some force. Is the reaction. Is the reaction turn the zinc atom in the zinc strip into zinc ions. So zinc basically slowly dissolves, becomes zinc ions. At the same time, since the zinc atom lose electrons, electrons given to the copper ion. The copper two ion becomes copper atom, and that would the black stuff showed up on the surface. If given long enough time, there's a significant change in the solution. The change in the solution happens including the color of the solution. The color solution, you can see it started fading. It become less, much less blue. And that's because uh, the solution lose copper ion. At the same time, the black debris on top of the zinc surface accumulate, grows bigger, larger quantity. And that's because the uh, copper atom start uh, forming a very loose structure. Loose copper uh, does not have the signature reddish shiny metal metallic color. It is because the copper particle accumulate have a much bigger surface area and do not have a good reflection or the red, reddish color. Zinc ion have no color. So the zinc dissolved, you can see the zinc solid that disappeared, uh, been corroded and the zinc ions dissolve in the solution have shows no color. That's what happened um, when you mix these two together. And this video shows, and uh, for this reaction, um, zinc lose electrons become zinc two plus charge. So zinc is the oxidation reaction. And copper two plus gain those electrons is a reduction reaction. And that's two half reactions. This reaction is spontaneous. Okay, so the reaction is spontaneous, happen without any continuous force. And zinc's been oxidized. Zinc's been oxidized. Zinc's been oxidized and copper's been reduced. It been reduced. Uh, in the reaction we saw from the, um, in the same copper solution we put in zinc, that reaction is not separated. Okay, so in one, in one location, the electron transfer is direct from the zinc metal to the copper ion. And these two, the copper and zinc these two reactants as in same container and the electron transfer is direct from zinc metal to copper ion and zinc dissolve copper from solid and this is direct contact the reaction will not produce any electrical work this reaction if it happens uh, sufficiently uh, quick it produces noticeable temperature change the temperature increase because the amount of energy released from the reaction. The energy released as a heat, so it is, um, it's, um, for a human's view, this heat energy is released without doing work. It is basically a wasted work, wasted energy. So the galvanic cells, it is we uh, make the two half reactions, the reduction half and oxygen half, takes place in two separate locations. And in between, we connect with, uh, with the uh, uh, conductor wire and a saw bridge. Then we'll construct a voltage cell. 
the voltage cell is basically the same reduction oxidation reaction uh, put into two two chambers and instead of uh, together then this reaction can still take place but the difference is but because the electron has to go through an external circuit those moving electrons will be able to do work and this is process use the chemical energy convert to electrical energy it is basically the basic principle of uh, all different kind of uh, batteries and the, the work done is done on the surroundings for example the double uh, a triple a or uh, the nine volt batteries we can use as the power electrons to move to do computations in the uh, computer chips within computer chips and then later display the result to the lcd all these process will be used the electrical work done by the chemical reaction in the battery there's another kind of electrochemical cells or we call it electrolytic cells electrolytic cells uh, we will deal with this later after introduce the batteries electrolytic cells are using the uh, electric energy to cause a chemical reaction so this is the reverse reverse compared with the voltaic cell voltaic cell it is used chemical reaction produce energy whereas the electrolytic cell is used electric energy to cause chemical re reaction complete opposite the electrolytic cell is not spontaneous reaction reaction will not proceed uh, without external electrical energy input and uh, so the electrolytic cell can be used in many occasions uh, for example to make a new substance to obtain um, the elements that are highly reducing agent or highly re oxidizing agent or we can use that for charging battery there are many batteries in our everyday life are rechargeable batteries so for example the car battery and the lithium battery in our uh, electronic device phone laptop and so forth those are used chemical reaction so basically uh, when the chemical reactions um, is stopped because the depletion of the reactant then we use the electrical energy to reverse reverse the chemical reactions in the battery reproduce those reactants so that the battery have a, a fresh uh, reactant to continue its use as uh, providing electrical energies so two kind of cells in our class we focus more on the voltaic cell voltaic cell it is basically the spontaneous redox reactions to produce electric charge, drive electric charge. And the electrolytic cell is complete opposite, non-spontaneous reaction. And uh, both type of cells using the electrodes. Electrodes are the electric conductors uh, that is help the electrons move in or move out of those half cells. Each half cell carries uh, the half reactions. As we learned from the last week, there are reduction half reactions and there's oxidation half. Those two half cells will do these uh, half reactions separately. So this class, we need to remember the anodes. Anodes um, is where the oxidation taking place anodes it's related to the ion that's anion 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 negative charge so the anode in the voltage cell we designate as a negative electrode is oxidation reaction takes place so remember oxidation is when you have uh, this kind of reaction oxidation reaction is the reactant lose electrons 
electrons as a product. In the electrode, uh, if the half reaction releases electrons, that means the negative charge coming from this electrode. The electron has negative charge. So that's why this electrode anode, it has negative charge. The cathode is just complete uh, opposite. And cathode relate to the ion that is cation. And we all know the cation is positive charge. The cathode in the voltage cell has a positive sign on that. Is a reduction take a reduction reaction taking place because uh, reaction you can write down as this half reaction uh, use electron as a react the reactant, which means electrons is needed for this half reaction, and uh, the positive end of the uh, the battery or voltage cell electrons moving in, moving toward the positive positive end of the uh, battery. And electron moving that is basically the source it can uh, use as a reactant for the reaction, reduction reactions. Uh, for our class in the future, remember if we talk about cathode reactions, it should be the reduction half. Cathode reaction, it has a reaction, the reduction half. And if you just talk about reduction, reduction means the elements have the oxygen number decrease. And the decrease, it is because it combined with electrons, negative charge. It brings down the positive charge on that element, on the oxygen states. So reduction is um, the rig. Reduction is gaining electrons. It's not the oxygen number decrease and the electrons as a reactant. This, this will take some time to get used to, but um, anyone should be keeping in mind, the cathode is the reduction reaction. And reduction means a number of things. Oxygen number decrease, okay, oxygen number decrease. Electron as a reactant. And <clears throat> Yes, I think these are the, the main features for the reduction half. Reduction half in the voltaic cell, it is a cathode reaction. Positive end. Uh, in the battery, that is the positive end, a uh, positive pole, positive electrode of the battery. So that's electrochemical cells. Um, we focus on the voltaic cell. So to make uh, the voltage cell, it will be able to separate the, the redox reaction into two half reactions into two different containers. The advantage is uh, we'll be able to use the electron movement, which is now outside, to do electrical work, to work for us. And the two half cells, which means the two half reactions are physically separated And the zinc is uh, because it's a strong capability to lose electrons, lower electron activity, lose electrons. It serves as the anode and the electrons leave in the zinc metal. And this electrons, once get into outside of the half cell, it will be able to do work. And eventually the electrons cannot accumulate, will go back to the uh, positive end, being attracted by the positive end uh, to feed those reduction half reactions. Reduction half, half reactions is where the electron come in and give away to the, uh, to the high oxygen number substance to reduce them. The each half cell reaction, the electrode need electrons to move and electron in the solution can only move when there are ions dissolve in the solution. So we need an electrolyte, the solution that is conductive to electricity. 
the solution to conduct electricity is because of free moving ions. And then the, uh, these two half cells, one do the reduction half, the other do the oxygen half. Electrons need to be, have a closed circuit. So once you have electron move this way, we use the um, salt bridge to connect these two, to complete the circuit. Electron move from the left to right. So the uh, right hand negative charge will build up. The right hand will have positive charge build up. Uh, to balance the ion charge, basically the salt bridge will provide the ions to maintain the neutrality of both half reactions. The right hand has a build up negative charge because the electron come in. Then the cations in the salt bridge. Salt bridge of cations, positive ions, will come in to maintain neutrality. Those positive charge come from the ions move in. And the, uh, the cations attracted by the electrons move to the right in the salt bridge. The anions being pushed away by negative charge. Anions move the opposite direction. This is to maintain, to neutralize the increase in the positive charge in the anode. When the zinc metal lose electrons, it becomes zinc ions. Zinc ion concentration increase. And there's an increase in positive charge. The flow of the uh, salt bridge anions into the solution will maintain is neutral. So here is a change in the concentration. The copper ion will decrease because uh, it gains electrons and the zinc ion concentration will increase. Salt bridge is necessary to maintain the uh, closed circuit they allow the ion movement to maintain neutral for both half reactions. Uh, so that's the voltaic cell a spontaneous redox reaction separate into two half reactions. And for the zinc and the copper reaction, we saw the animation and uh, this is actually the, the real color looks like. Uh, Zinc metal lose electrons and copper gains electrons. Salt bridge have ion movement maintain the neutral. Uh, write down two half reactions. The zinc is losing electrons because it's higher uh, activity in the uh, reduction power, higher reaction activity, lose electrons. And once the lose electrons become zinc ion. Those electrons given to the copper, it causes reduction reactions. So the copper will start building extra. These are the extra amount of copper because of reduction. And so you can see the zinc losing. These are being dissolved. These are being dissolved, corroded by the losing of the copper ion. We're losing the copper, copper metal. The other end have the build up, have the increase in the copper solid. This reaction will continue until the zinc completely dissolve or the copper ions depleted. Either one of these two will cause the stop of the reaction. So that's what the reaction progress, what will happen. Zinc solid will decrease, zinc ion will increase, copper ion decrease, the copper metal will build up, more copper solid formed. It causes increase in copper solid. So that's over time the reaction takes place. The zinc being corroded, okay, the starting diameters like this. But in the end, because of corrosion, we lose a big chunk of zinc. Same time, the copper, you start with this diameter. Over time, it increases the amount of copper. Increase the amount of copper. 
is because of the reduction of the copper ion. The, uh, the explanation for this, the explanation for why there's a change in the Oh, actually, it's more about galvanic cell. So, anyway, so when you have a zinc metal with copper in the two separate solutions, the zinc metal and the copper have the electron transfer. Uh, this is the reaction. If together, it'll be the one you look at the, uh, the two beakers and the different uh, results. Uh, that's beginning to end. This is actually what really happens in the electron transfer, in terms of electron transfer. A useful galvanic cell can be constructed by using zinc and copper. The anode is a zinc bar placed into a zinc sulfate solution. And the cathode is a copper bar placed into a copper two sulfate solution. The two solutions are connected by a porous sodium chloride salt bridge that prevents the two solutions from mixing, but allows ions to migrate. Attaching a cell shows that electrons flow from zinc to copper. Because zinc is a more active metal than copper, it is more likely to lose electrons. For this reason, the zinc bar is oxidized, producing a zinc ion and two electrons per zinc atom. So you notice the, this gray piece of uh, rectangular star with rectangular shape is a zinc bar or zinc piece of metal strip. And we are keep losing the zinc metal strips. The solid uh, volume becomes smaller and smaller because of losing the zinc. And those zinc atoms lose electrons, become soluble zinc ions uh, dissolved in the solution. The copper ions in solution gain two electrons and are reduced to copper metal. So those electrons come from zinc, come from zinc, and give it to copper. And copper as a conductor it'll be able to pass the electrons to the uh, copper ions, give the copper two plus charge ions. And once the, the copper two plus charge, copper two ion gain electrons becomes copper atom. As the reaction continues, excess positive zinc ions build up in the zinc solution. At the same time, the loss of copper ions from the copper sulfate solution creates an excess of negative sulfate ions. Positive sodium ions migrate into the copper sulfate solution from the salt bridge, while negative chloride ions migrate from the salt bridge to the zinc solution and maintain neutrality of the solutions. The reaction stops when the zinc bar or copper ions are depleted. The overall cell reaction can be written like this. So there's some terminologies, again, the uh, electrodes. Electrodes are the conductor uh, in the voltaic cell that is supposed to help the electrons move in and out. Uh, the anode is negative end, it's have the oxidation half. From the outside, the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. And cathode is positive end. It is uh, absorb electrons and cause a reduction reaction in that half reaction. Salt bridge. The salt bridge is a very essential part of the voltaic cell. It is typically um, a hollow tube, U-shape, have a U-shape. It can be straight or slightly bent. 
And inside the tube, it is containing a solution, but it's not a free-flowing solution. Typically, it is made of a gel. The jello that you, uh, most of you enjoy the jello. It has sugar, it has citric acid, it has some flavors, it's very tasty. The jello it can be conductive if when we make the jello using the uh, electrolyte solutions. And the electrolyte has to be non-reactive. Salt bridge will use non-reactive. The non-reactive, it means uh, electrochemically non-reactive. The non-reactive ions useful, suitable for salt bridge are the sodium ions, uh, potassium ions. These ions are very difficult to gain electrons. As a matter of fact, most of the reactions, they are spectral ions, maintain soluble and have no reaction, not, do not participate in chemical reactions. The anions will use nitrate ions or sulfate ions. Nitrate ions being most popular because it essentially will not form insoluble compound with any possible reaction product. Sulfate, it has chance of forming insoluble with the calcium or lead or those kind of ions. But typically the uh, salt bridge use the combination of uh, between those cations and those anions, non-reactive. And the salt bridge in the uh, jelly form, in the jello form, and so it cannot really freely uh, flowing, but by diffusion, it can maintain the neutrality, neutrality of the um, ion depletion or ion increase. You have the ions to be able to move. Uh, for measuring voltage, a very small, very low amount of current is involved. So the jelly type of uh, uh, or gelatin type of uh, salt bridge is most common. For the real uh, battery reactions, we use a different formula to, do, to make a salt bridge, but achieve the same purpose. It is maintain neutrality. It allows ions to uh, move. And so those are the, what a salt bridge. Oftentimes, we use a different kind of electrodes. And there are two types of electrodes. One type is the active electrode. Uh, the active electrode is the electrode that really participate in the redox reactions. So for example, the zinc copper voltage cell, we saw the redox reaction takes place in two half cells and the zinc metal being dissolved. So the zinc metal, it is conductive and that serves as electrode. But in the meantime, it loses electrons. So it also participates in the reaction. The copper electrode in this voltage cell is not a, a good involved in the reaction. Even though it passes electrons, it transfer, helps transfer electrons to give to the copper ion. But the copper electrode itself is not reactive. That is what we call inactive electrode. The inact inactive electrode are the conductor that will not participate in the chemical reaction. And so for example, the graphite, this is the most common use for the inactive electrode. Uh, the graphite is a very unique nonmetal. It's one of the few nonmetals that are, conduct uh, are conducted to electricity, even though it has fairly high resistance. It's made of pure carbon and can allow the electron to move in and out. Platinum is a very unreactive metal. Uh, it essentially will not participate in most chemical reactions. It serves only as a conductor. So these two are the examples of the inactive electrode or non-active electrode. The inactive electrode it can be used in this kind of situation. Um, so basically the redox reaction between the iodide and the permanganate are separated into two half cells. 
one of the half cell have the iodide solution and the other half cell have a permanganate solution. At the beginning, there will be only these two ions. To make the redox reaction takes place, uh, we need the electrode. So the two pieces of conductors can be graphite or platinum. These are the non-active, uh, inactive electrodes. And in between, we connect with a metal conductor or a voltmeter. Voltmeter, it is basically a voltmeter, it is a measure voltage. And also same time, it is conducting, linking the two half cells. The voltmeter shows us how much electric force to push electrons. And then uh, in between, the electron movement require the closed circuit, salt bridge is in place, non-active salt bridge is in place. And once this is connect, uh, the iodide will start lose electrons, lose electrons, go through multimeter and get into the permanganate half cell. Permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent, so they pull the electrons in. And once this happens, the iodide becomes iodine after losing electrons. Permanganate with the acid uh, gains electrons becomes manganese two ions. So the two half reactions is as such, two half reactions. Iodide lose electrons, so that's the Leo or the oil. Oxidation is loose, lose electrons, lose electrons. The reduction half is a permanganate gained electrons being reduced into manganese two plus. Reduction is gain, electrons as a reactant. And this half, these two half reactions uh, make the complete balance, combined together will give us the combined redox reaction. And the visible changes, uh, this solution start from the colorless, colorless iodide solution. It become iodine, iodine. The iodine, um, if it stay nearby the electrode, it is a purple crystal. Although it can possibly dissolve with iodide form a uh, brownish solution, but mainly the iodine might deposit here. And the other half reaction, permanganate have very unique purple, intense purple color. And after the uh, reduction reaction, loss of the permanganate ions, it'll, you can see the visible uh, diminishing purple color in the solution. So that's the redox reaction use a non-electrode, non-reactive or inactive electrode. The voltage cell, um, there's a two half reactions. And uh, we can draw a diagram shows the two cells and uh, connector, eternal, uh, the external circuit, external electric device and sword bridge. That'll be um, four pieces to show. And with the two beakers, typically two beakers for the two half reactions. There's an easier way to show the a voltage cell, how it is constructed up with using the, di use the uh, simple one line uh, symbol. That's what we call the cell notation. We start from the anode on the left hand side, okay. left hand side at anode, and right hand side are the cathode reactions. Anode. So the left hand side, we start with the oxidation half. Okay. We'll put oxidation half to the left hand side. And the reduction half, put on the right hand. So this is what we call a cell diagram. Use a one line, shows you all the components. 
in the voltage cell. The double line, double vertical line means uh, is a saw bridge. So this is a saw bridge. Left hand are the anode or the oxidation half. And uh, the single vertical line means uh, different states. One of the reactant, uh, one of the participating agent in this oxidation half is a solid zinc, zinc metal. So zinc solids shows uh, to symbolize a zinc metal. And the product is a zinc ion. And zinc ions dissolved in aqueous solution. So we have different states. Between two different states, we use a single vertical line. So keep in mind, this is the uh, anode, is oxidation half. And the right hand are the cathode. Uh, the cathode, similarly, we use a one single vertical line, symbolize separation of states between the phase, physical phases, phase or states between the aqueous and solid. So if I give you the cell diagram, um, you're supposed to know what kind of reactions in this uh, voltage cell. The left hand side are the anode, which means oxidation half. And you have zinc and zinc. As the oxidation half reaction, electrons are the product. So with the cell diagram shows you the component, you can start right down the reaction like this. And obviously it's not balanced because the zinc, you only need to decide where the zinc ions is. Okay. And all the reactions have electrons as a product on the right hand side. So the oxygen states must arise, must increase this. From start from zinc, become zinc a higher electron state, higher oxygen state. Uh, so when you write down the uh, anode components, the interpretation is uh, there must be the oxidation half, and since oxidation half, electrons as a product. And based on this, you can complete and balance the half reaction in this anode. Okay. So the, this anode reaction is oxidation half, oxygen number increase, the right hand is the reduction half, cathode reduction half. Reduction half electron as a reactant. And you have a both reactant and product are copper, are copper, maybe different forms. And so obviously this has to be positive charge to maintain the become neutral. And with cathode with these two components, you can write down the equation like this, is electrons as a reactant. Uh, some of the, the cell diagram shows you concentration of the ions in the uh, diagram. Uh, but if the concentration not mentioned, if the concentration molar is not mentioned, then by default, that should be the one molar, the standard. The standard condition is one molar solution. And so this is anode, and this is a salt bridge and cathode, so I call this ABC. Uh, anode, bridge, cathode. Anode, bridge, and cathode. Okay, ABC for the cell diagram. Uh, the cell diagram or cell notation can be used for inactive electrode. The uh, inactive electrode, this is one example. When you see graphite, they are not participating in the redox reaction. They are just conductors, electroconductors, help electrons move. And so the 
anode reaction is this. And these are the cathode react reactions. And so if you give you the cell diagram, you're supposed to write down the node reactions. The node reactions, anode reaction, this is anode, lose electrons. The anode reaction should look like this. Okay. And the cathode reaction, cathode reaction is the reduction half. So electron as a reactant. And these are the, these are the uh, reactant and product mixed together, mixed together. So um, know the oxygen states. That'll help you to decide which one's reactant. Is this a reactant or this is a reactant? Uh, use oxygen states. And the reaction uh, for this, these two half reactions, we've seen that in the previous slides. You can look back the um, two half reactions. But a cell diagram, it looks like the anode, salt bridge, and castle, ABC. Uh, draw the cell diagram. This is the uh, question asked about draw the cell diagram. Basically, with the cell diagram, to draw the cell notation, what I mean actually is a notation. The, uh, use ABC, the format. Um, so for this reaction, how do we know this reaction is anode? You can see the electrons moving out. The arrows is showing the direction of the electrons. It's moving out of, it's moving out electrons moving out out of this. So this is the uh, electrode that is a giveaway electrons, which means this is reaction. It's give away the electrons. Those are reactions that give away electrons. And uh, the one with electrons going out, that's anode. The electrons coming out is anode. The electron going into the cathode. So the cell diagram, my left-hand side, should be the anode, is where the electron come out from. The electron come out from the chromium and chromium ion. And that is the, uh, I write down chromium solid. Between these two are different states, so I use a one vertical line. And this solution is a chromium aqueous solution. So that's the anode uh, notation. This solution, chromium solution, is in contact with the salt bridge. And that's why we um, put a uh, chromium three right in front of the salt bridge. Double vertical line means the salt bridge. And after salt bridge, we'll get into the um, the cathode. Cathode, again, the electron coming in and the uh, electrons. Salt bridge is in contact with the silver ion. And this is the aqueous solution. And finally, between the silver ion and the silver metal, two different phases, different states, physical states, single vertical line. solid silver and metal as the, uh, the cathode. So we should know if you, uh, if you were given this a cell notation, uh, what does the, uh, what are the reduction half and oxygen half? The anode, cathode, and salt bridge. And anode is oxygen half oxidation half. And the right hand is a cathode, which is reduction. Reduction half.
Uh, so let's take a break. We'll get into the why there's a redox reactions between the two halves. Zinc atom has lower electron activity than the copper atom. So zinc atom attract the electrons weak. Electron will be easy to uh, migrate, leave the zinc atom. Uh, and the copper ion, since the copper atom holds electrons stronger, copper ion have a stronger capability to attract electrons than the zinc ion. So this end, the copper end, electrons being pulled in because stronger tendency for the copper ion to attract electrons. And the zinc ion, zinc metal have stronger ten tendency to lose the electron move out. And so one end is pushing pushing out, the other end is pulling in and close the form a closed circuit. So that would be the reason why we have a redox reaction. For some reason, PowerPoint not did it show up properly. Okay. So when these two form a closed circuit by turn on the switch, on switch is basically when the electrons be allowed to move from one end to the other. Uh, if they're allowed to move, then the uh, electron flow and the ion charge on the salt bridge still maintain the neutrality by the ions migration within the salt bridge. And uh, in the end, we have a, a complete uh, one half, zinc as an anode, oxygen half, and copper as the reduction half. Yeah, the difference in the reducing power, reduction power, it comes from uh, the difference in the capability for the metal to give up electrons. Zinc, because of low electron activity, uh, it is easier to give up electrons than the copper, copper atom, because of high electron activity. <laughs>